Hello guys, it's Matt and finally here is my optimization guide for Atomic Heart. I actually didn't plan a video for this one guys since it already performs surprisingly good that I think this game does not need any more tweaking. I mean just look at the performance you're seeing here relative to the quality and scale of the visuals on screen. Even at max settings, the frame rates I'm getting here are exceptionally high and what's more important is that the performance is free of the usual stutters we are used to seeing in current PC titles. When you move indoors especially, choosing maximum preset is just a no-brainer here. I mean, look at this. The game's performance is skyrocketing even at maximum settings, so for me, sacrificing visuals to optimize this game even further is no longer needed. However, when you move outdoors, performance gets a little bit interesting as it becomes more taxing for your GPU compared to indoor scenes. So for those with lower end cards that can struggle outdoors, this is where our video will focus on. I still think the game should be enjoyed at its maximum quality considering its overall excellent performance and its strikingly distinct art style. But if you want more FPS, here are 4 settings you should focus on to still retain that optimal graphical quality this game should be enjoyed at. First up we have shadows and for this I recommend ultra if you want to retain image quality while gaining some performance. That's because moving down from Max to Ultra will give about 10 FPS on a 3080 Ti and Ultra also performs the same as High for some reason. If you want the biggest performance boost however, go to Medium. But the shadows will become so pixelated and blurry to be anything enjoyable to look at. That's why I think Ultra Shadows is the best compromise for visuals and performance. Next we have SSAO and this is a pleasant surprise guys since the lowest setting won't turn off AO completely. Instead, it only reduces the amount of contact shadows generated by objects. The real difference to performance for AO only happens when moving down from high to medium, which means max and high performs the same while medium and low also perform the same. It's an easy decision guys, if you want image quality, go with max. If you want performance, go with medium. Our third setting is post-processing effects. The real difference to performance comes when moving down from max to ultra, and that's it. Ultra to low performs the same on my testing, and you will lose bloom lighting on lower settings, so this is really a choice between ultra and max. However, despite the label being ultra, there's a noticeable degradation and instability to aliasing which makes the image look noisy and rough. Yes, there may be a huge performance benefit, but look at how Max is able to produce cleaner and more stable outlines. Look at the fence for example. On Max, it does look like a fence, but on Ultra, it looks like an anomaly. But for the purpose of this guide, we can set up with Ultra. Our last setting is vegetation and this can give you the biggest performance gain when moving down from max to low. However, it heavily reduces the level of immersion as environments become more barren and artificial. It all depends on you though. If you are not bothered by the lack of foliage, choose low. If you want to retain the level of density with some performance gain, go with ultra. But if you want a more aggressive compromise, go with medium. For this guide, Let's settle with Ultra. So that's it guys, those are the only settings we should focus on. The other settings are not just worth it. For example, 3D model quality won't bring you substantial performance between max and low, and choosing lower settings will result in these polygonal looking LOD terrain that also exhibit some sort of warping effects when you move forward. It's really ugly, so just settle with max on this one. The number of object setting controls the amount of environment props and objects rendered, but this is another insignificant setting if you are GPU bound. It's a really cheap setting to turn to max and it adds a lot of detail and character to the environment. If you are CPU bound however, this may improve your GPU usage so take note of the setting when you experience FPS drops when looking at lots of objects on screen. 
Material quality is another setting that is better left at max. Once again, insignificant performance gains with unremarkable visual differences. However, there is a big boost to performance when going low, but this turns off foliage sway animations, which makes the world even more artificial and dead. Would you really want this? Come on, man. So that's it guys, I know there are other settings on here, but it's still the same story. Just leave them all at max, trust me. To recap, let's start from Atomic Preset, turn down shadows to Ultra, Ambient Occlusion to Medium, Post Processing to Ultra, and Vegetation to Ultra. That's it. I think this is already overkill as you can see in this optimized versus atomic comparison. I mean, look at the frame rate, guys. And this is the farthest I can go in sacrificing visual quality for performance. Personally, I'm already well satisfied with maximum settings, even outdoors, but it's still nice to know which settings are more important than the others. But what do you think? Is the image degradation noticeable in our optimized settings? Please tell me down in the comments below. So before I leave guys, here are two essential tricks I want to share with you to improve your atomic heart experience. First, since there's no official FOV options added by the developers, just go to the link I shared down in the description, download the main files, extract them, go to the game location I also shared in the description, and then drag your preferred FOV value to the PAK folder. The best FOV value for me would be 110 as it looks more natural and avoids that fish lens effect that starts to appear at 120. Lastly, you can also drastically reduce the time needed to get into your game by going to your Atomic Heart Content Movies folder and delete all video files starting with the launch text or just move them to another location. This will skip that long ass intro video which is actually longer than booting the game and loading your save file. It's really useful. Well that's all guys, I hope this guide helps you out. Always feel free to ask your questions and do share your experience with this game down below. Once again guys, take care and bye bye.